bago po tayo dumako sa salita ng Diyos, tayo po ay humingi ng biyaya sa Kanya. O aming dakilang Diyos, sa aming pong muling pagharap sa inyo, pakinggan ang inyong mga salita at pag-aralan ito. Patuloy po ninyo kaming tulungan na magkaroon ng spiritual understanding as well as desire to do that which is pleasing in your sight. Ano man ang iparinig mo sa amin as long as it is your word. Enable us by the power of the Spirit to see what we need to see, to hear what we need to hear, and to do what we need to do. To the glory of the one who gave his life as a ransom for our sins, no other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Maraming bahagi sa salita ng Diyos na ito'y nag-aanyaya. Nag-aanyaya na manampalataya sa Kanya, nag-aanyaya na lumapit sa Kanya, nag-aanyaya na paglingkuran siya. Ngunit hindi lahat ng tila baga tumugon doon sa mga anyaya na yon ay kinasiyahan ng Diyos. Iniisip natin bakit ganon. Sapagkat una sa lahat, batid natin kung sino ang Diyos. Kapag ka nakalimutan natin kung sino yung nilalapitan natin, bagamat siya ay mapag-anyaya sa atin, matutuklasan natin in the end na hindi siya nasiyahan sa ating paglapit sa Kanya. Kaya nga kung kayo ay masipag na nag observe sa mga binabasa sa salita ng Diyos, mapupunan nyo na napakaraming bahagi na inilathala ng Panginoon ang hindi niya nasiyahang pagtugon doon sa mga lumapit sa Kanya, naglingkod sa Kanya, at nagpapahayag ng kanilang pananampalataya sa Kanya. Napakarami niyan, higit sa lahat, sa lumang tipan. At sa umagang ito ay nais nice kong sariwain lamang sa inyong isipan ng isang bahagi na kung saan makikita natin na hindi nasiyahan ang ating Panginoon doon po sa mga taong bahagi ng kanyang priesthood at sa halip na sila ang manguna sa mga tamang paglapit sa Diyos, turuan ang mga tao, babalaan ang mga tao patungkol sa bagay na ito. Ang Diyos pa mismo ang nakakita at nakaranas na mismo ang kanyang priesthood ang sumira sa mga bagay na ito. At dito malalaman natin kung bakit hindi nasiyahan ang Diyos. At yung ating pagbubulay-bulayan ay masusupungan natin sa 1 Samuel chapter 2. Doon po sa priesthood na nung panahon na yon pinangunahan ni Eli at yung kanyang dalawang anak na si Hophni at si Phinehas. So una po sa lahat, tingnan natin yung special privilege entrusted to Eli and his two sons. Special po dahil galing sa Diyos, special po dahil hindi lahat maaring makapaglingkod, makalapit sa Diyos nung panahon na yon. Sa 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 3, makikita natin doon simula lang ipresent sa atin ang pamilyang ito. This man went up from 
his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phineas, the priest of the Lord, were there. So napakalinaw po sa ating mga mata. Kitang-kita natin na binabanggit dito ng may akda na doon sa templo po merong tinatawag na priest of the Lord. At nakita natin mag sila. Si Eli, dalawang anak niyang si Hophni, at si Phinehas. They belong to the tribe that God has chosen to serve as priests in the worship of the temple. What a privilege! Diba? Ipinanganak ka rin doon sa tribe na yon. At hindi lamang yon. Si Hophni at Phinehas, ang kanilang ama, ang tinataguri ang pinaka pinuno ng priesthood nung panahon na yon. Eli was a priest to live during the time of the judges. At kung inyo pang naalala yung initial meeting with Hannah who eventually gives birth to a son Samuel whom she had promised to loan to the Lord eh ang tinutukoy po na priest doon si Eli. Samuel eventually under the care of Eli became also a priest. Became a judge in Israel. Raised by this man. And according to this verse, may dalawa din siyang anak, si Hophni and Phinehas, both of them as well as Samuel learn from Eli the sacrificial system, the priestly responsibilities. Pero ano yung different? Samuel turned out to be a faithful and reliable priest, but sadly, Eli's own two sons turned out much different from Samuel. Every disciple that in same teacher, same tutor, and yet different result. But don't they share this special privilege? Entrusted to Eli, entrusted to his two sons. But secondly. Look at the general description to Eli's two sons in 1 Samuel chapter 2. In verse 12, this is the general description. Now the two sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. Diba naglilingkod sa Panginoon? Naglilingkod, pinangungunahan yung mga tao ng Panginoon. But they do not know the Lord. Yun ang problema sa mga sumasamba sa maraming iglesia. Though they come to worship God, or they come to worship kung sino man yung nasa isip nila na Diyos, Many have only a shallow idea who this God is compared to the others who really know God. Pagka ganito po yung sitwasyon, makikita mo na magkaiba ang magiging resulta. What we have here is a very sad verse. Because it summarizes for us the true state of Hophni and Phinehas. Parang ganito po yan. Lumalapit tayo sa tinatawag nating Diyos na nakikita niya ang lahat. And if God is to reveal what He sees in each one of us beginning with me and then every room, ano kaya maririnig natin? Dito, Sa sons ni Eli, ang sabi ng Panginoon, they were corrupt. 
they did not know the Lord. Kaya nga nakalulungkot. They were called here corrupt or literally sa Hebrew, worthless men. Sinabi ng Panginoon, as far as I am concerned, itong dalawang naglilingkod sa akin na to are worthless priests. So pwede palang merong maglingkod sa Panginoon and yet, in the sight of God, God's assessment is that they are worthless. If you are using the King James, the King James renders this more accurately to the original Hebrew, which is the sons of Belial. Yun po ang King James. They are sons of Belial. The word Belial means worthlessness. Kaya nga, nung naging New King James na, New King James, ang sinabi dito, the sons of Ile were corrupt. Kasi, talagang itinalaga sila ng Diyos na priest. Talagang nandun sila sa tamang line. At tama lang. In fact, sila yung ahalili sa kanilang ama as the high priest. Kaya lang, corrupted sila. Nakukuha nyo, tama, pero corrupt. Nasira. At makikita natin why the two sons are worthless men. Why the two sons were sons of wickedness. Kasi Belial also means wickedness. Belial also means destruction. At ididugtong pa ng malinaw that these men did not know the Lord. Well, pag kinausap mo siya, pag pinangg- pinari, pinakinggan mo yung turo nila siguro, ang magiging impression mo, they know the Lord. Perhaps when somebody asks you, who is God to you? You can answer it. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ to you? You can answer it. But do you really know Him? The way you should know Him. Because people who knew Him and really have come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, everyone who experienced that became a new creature. They are not the same person anymore. Nagbago sila. At bakit nagbabago? There is something that's going to take place if people came to know the Lord. Yun po yung tinutukoy dito. They have learned so many things about the Lord, the history of the people of God. They have learned maybe so much about the sacrificial system. And all the rituals involved in it, they understood perhaps what it means. Pero the problem is, not doon. Kaya sila sons of Belial is because they do not know the Lord. It is like Jesus Christ saying, you are of your father, the devil. Yan ang problema. Yung father na tinatawag mo, it is not my father who is in heaven. Indeed, your father is the devil because that which you have been doing is what the devil does. If you are of my father, you will do the things that I do. Because I am of the father. Sabi ni Jesus. Pero siyempre nga naman, kung iba yung ama mo, Ang tinutukoy doon, yung pinaka pagkatao mo, ano mangyayari? Kakaiba talaga ang makikita sa kanila. So yun yung pinapakita dito. The general description. But thirdly, there is the, dis- the particular description given of the sins of Hopni and Phineas. 
Hindi lamang po general description ang binigay sa atin. There is a particular description of their sins. What do worthless sons of Eli does before God? How does God evaluate it? Dalawang bagay lamang ang makikita natin. There is no real reverence in communing with God. Lahat ng lumalapit sa Diyos, lahat ang nag lumapit sa Diyos, first of all, are trying to establish a communion with God. But, sa dalawang ito, there is no real reverence. Beginning verse 13. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come with a three-pronged flesh hook in his hand while the meal was boiling. Then he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot, and the priest would take for himself all that the flesh hook brought up. So they did in Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Also, before they burned the fat, the priest's servant would come and say to the man who sacrificed, Give meat for roasting to the priest, for he will not take boiled meat from you, but raw. And if the man said to him, They should really burn the fat first, then you may take as much as your heart desires. He would then answer him, No, but you must give it now. And if not, I will take it by force. Grabe, no? Yung description. Ayan yung ipaliwanag ko para maintindihan nyo kung ano yung describe. These verses inform us that Hopney and Phineas decided they would withhold the best from God when people brought their animals to sacrifice. Kasi may part doon na para yon sa Diyos, the best parts of the animal offered. They would send, sabi dito, a servant to take as much good flesh as a large cooking fork could hold. If the person offering the sacrifices objected, hindi, hindi dapat ganyan. I'm offering this to the Lord. You're taking something which is for the Lord. The servant would become terrible. No? Magbabago yung appearance ng servant. Magpa-promise na kapag hindi mo ibigay. I will take it by force if necessary. They were what? Stealing actually from God what was due only Him. Oh, may naalala kayo sa ibang portion ng scripture. Sabi ng mga tao, how have you been robbing you? Si meron pong pagnanakaw sa harapan ng Diyos. May kinalaman doon sa mga bagay na pag-aari ng Diyos. How have we robbed you? Naalala nyo sa Malakay. So ganun yung mga issue. Because yung mga tao nakakalimot Siguro kung sino ang Diyos, nakakalimot doon sa mga bagay na ito. Kaya, ang tanong, why were they doing it? Why are they misusing the sacrifices offered by the people for their own selfish ends? Diba kung isipin nyo, tayo bakit binabudget nating mabuti lahat as much as possible? 
because we want to avoid, we want to protect even the pastors, na matem sila to rob what belongs to God. Anything that you and I have given to the Lord does not belong to us anymore. The moment you release it into your hands, for example, kung pera yan, naglagay ka sa offering ng pera, hindi mo sinasabi, pera ko yan. Actually, hindi mo pa binibigay, sabi ng Panginoon, akin yan. Hindi siya nagiging sa Panginoon pag ibinigay mo. May bahagi sa buhay natin, sa mga ibinigay sa atin ng Panginoon sa atin, na iyong bahagi na yon bahagi ng Panginoon. And basically, God is expecting that during the time that we appear before Him, we appear carrying that which belongs to Him and return back those things to Him. Kung generous ka, you even give what is yours, which God gave it to you. Kaya nga, yours na yon, Sa akin na yon kasi ibinigay sa akin para sa iyo yan. Ito para sa akin. A generous and cheerful giver is one who takes from the things that he now owns and take from it and still give it to the Lord. Kaya nga ang tawag sa kanya, di ba, cheerful. At kung may nakikita siya mga ibang needs, nagiging sacrificial pa yung offering niya. Kasi gusto niya na mamit ka agad yung needs na yun. So, nagsasacrifice siya kasi yung iba doon, ginagamit niya na para sa mga needs niya. Ngayari, sasabihin niya sa mga anak niya, itong taon na ito, wala muna tayong mga outing. Wala muna tayong sa bakasyon nyo sa June, July. Hindi muna tayo mag swimming Ang church nagpapatayo ng building. Yung budget ko sa recreation natin, itong taon lang naman na ito, ibibigay natin doon. You see, may sacrificial offering siya. Bakit sacrifice? Sinasacrifice niya yung ibang bagay. It cost him something. And that is His. Bigay ng Panginoon sa kanya para sa stewarding niya, ginamit niya, naglaan siya sa bagay na yon as a good steward. And yet, they sacrifice in order to give. Dito, sa offering na ibibigay ng mga tao doon sa temple, may bahagi doon, malinaw, Tinuro ng Panginoon sa Kanya yun. The rest, dinesignate na ng Panginoon. So yun, why are they doing that? Why are they misusing the sacrifices? Did the Lord fail to give them clear instruction? Nagkulang ba ang Panginoon? Or, was it because the Lord forgot to adequately provide for them? Kasi ang tanong dyan, pag ginamit mo yun, bakit mo ginamit? Dahil ba hindi adequate yung provision ng Lord para sa sa'yo? Kasi the rest belongs to you. Bakit yung kanya hindi mo ibigay? We told mo sa kanya. And when you do so, the Lord is saying, you are robbing me. Hindi ka kontento? So dapat nagtatanong ka. Kung titignan natin yung mosaic provisions, madali masagot in Leviticus 3, beginning verse 3. Then he shall offer from the sacrifice of the peace offering an offering made by fire to the Lord. The fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails, the two kidneys 
and the fat that is on them by the flanks, and the fatty lobe attached to the liver above the kidneys, he shall remove. And Aaron's son shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is on the wood that is on the fire, as an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. So yun lang yung tatanggalin mo. Pag tinanggal mo yung mga yun, yun ang i-offer mo sa Panginoon. Kanya yun eh. And then it will be burned with fire. It becomes what? Pag yun ang sinunog mo, it becomes a sweet aroma to the Lord. Eh kung ibang parte ng animal yung hindi, mas maganda pa nga ito eh. No? Ito yung tutunogin ko. Eh kasi gusto ko yung liver. Gusto ko yung mga tama-tama doon. Ano? Masarap sa barbecue yun. Diba? So, in Leviticus, so malinaw. There's a clear mosaic instruction. In Leviticus 7, beginning verse 34. For the beast, I mean beast, for the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the heave offering, I have taken from the children of Israel from the sacrifices of their peace offering, and I have given them to Aaron the priest and to his sons from the children of Israel by the statute forever. May provision ba sila? So clear yung instruction, kung ano yung nasa Panginoon, may clear instruction kung ano yung provision ng Lord para sa priest. Adequate yung kasi sinaba and his sons. Deuteronomy 18 verse 3. And this shall be the priest due from the people, from those who offer a sacrifice, whether it is bull or sheep, they shall give to the priest the shoulders, the cheeks, and the stomach. Hindi pa ba kontento ka dun? Diba? Eh kung marami yung offering, eh marami din kasi yung priest. Tapos yung mga children nila. Para sa Panginoon, dahil kung mag offer yung mga tao, magiging sapat lahat yun. Ang lalaking bahagi nun eh. So from these few verses alone, it is obvious that clear instructions were given and that God made sure that they are adequately supplied with reference to their own need. So ang tanong eh, why were they doing it? Because they do not know the Lord. You see, Ganon din sa atin. If you are withholding something you know belongs to the Lord, do you think you can give a rightful excuse? O nasabihin ng Panginoon sa iyo, sa akin, sa ating lahat, you do not know me. That's the reason. That's the root of it. Tapos idagdag natin yung sarili nilang karanasan from childhood. Imagine yourself living in the temple since childhood. As surely you know that it is a place of prayer, a place of worship, a place where people are to deal with their sins before a holy God through the sacrifices they offer. Diba? Why are the sacrifices being offered? It is being offered in order to deal with the anger of God toward men who commit sin, who live in sin. Malinaw yun. Lumaki ka na alam mo ganun. But looking at what they have been doing, it is easy to understand they grew up in the temple of God without any regard to it at all. Pwede mangyari sa atin yun. Ito yung place of worship natin. ba? At this time, we use this place to worship God. 
Eh dahil nasasanay nga tayo, katulad ng mga tao, noong unang panahon, possibly na, even during time of worship, kung ano-ano ginagawa nyo, you have no regard for the gathering. This is a gathering to worship God, to offer sacrifices to God. Sasabihin nyo lang ba ang higpit ni Pastor Joey? Pinagbabawal niya na mag-text kayo during worship. Pinagbabawal niya na sagutin niyo yung tunog ng cellphone niyo during ano. Ako po matagal ako na buhay, tumanda ako, wala na masyadong nangyari, wala ang cellphone. Marami nagagalit sa akin, nanghirap daw ako kontakin. Kasi nga tumanda ako na hindi ako, re- hindi ako masyadong nag-realize sa cellphone eh. Eh dito, we're talking about worship. How do you regard God? O kaya, pag sinabi sa atin na magkaroon muna tayo ng silence, ayaw natin makinig. Doon ang sasabi. Can we have some moments of silence before our worship is about to begin. Yung iba, have no regard. Kung ako tatanong ninyo, itatanong ko, do you know who God is? Do you know why we are here and who we are going to meet? Isa lang audience dito. You're not meeting with me here in the pulpit. You're meeting with God. Your intention is to meet with God and to worship Him and to give Him the best that you can. Imperfect at it is. Nangliliit nga tayo because sin is to fall short of God's glory. I know I will fall short in my preaching. I know I will fall short in my worship. But yet I am very grateful that though I know I still fall short of the standard. Yet God is willing to receive it if it is done in the name of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, what? Who among us? Hindi naman yun ang inihingi ng Lord. Alam niya, hindi. Kaya nga, we always fall short. Kaya nga sa Lord's Prayer, ano sabi doon? Forgive us our debts. Ano yung debt natin sa Panginoon? The Lord who is holy deserve a perfect sacrifice, a perfect worship, a perfect service. And we owe Him that. And we cannot give it to Him. Forgive us our debts. Jesus Christ says, you should. Why? It helps you be reminded na coming here, you're not doing something uh, good for God. No? You're not doing God a favor by coming here on the Lord's day. Are you? Are we doing God a favor? Pasalamat ka, Panginoon, nandito ako. Kung hindi, sino mag-worship sa'yo? No. You're not going doing that a favor because then that is work salvation. The only reason I'm here because God called me. And God promised me that in Christ, though I fall short of His glory, which is sin, Yet in Christ, nangako siya. I will be at peace with you. I won't be angry with you. Di ba? Yun lang naman nagpapasipay sa heart ko. Paano ko magkalit ang Diyos sa akin? Hindi ko kaya ang perfect eh. And what gives me care? It is the grace. It is the mercy of God. Pero hindi ko kinakalimutan yan. 
sa ating buhay. Huwag mong kakalimutan yan. Because, who is God? Yan ang problema. Kaya ang sinabi, do sa general description, they do not know me. It's not stricto ang isang iglesia sa iba ang maluwag. No. Our coming together is all about God. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about my comfort and your comfort. Pasabihin ba natin eh, eh kung super aircon sana to, di sana yung worship ko sa Panginoon. Is a cool climate would make you honor God? Is that it? Your comfort? So if you are not comfort, di sa ano, nako, umulan. Bago pa naman yung sapatos ko. Baka ang mga kagad to, mahal pa naman bili ko. Hintayin ko muna, tumila ang ulan, bago ako pumunta sa church. May control ka ba sa ulan? Eh, ang gusto ng Panginoon, on the Lord's Day, pumunta ka na umuulan. Ano problema mo doon? Eh, yun ang gusto. The Lord does what He will. What pleases Him? Now, are you willing to do what pleases God? Are you willing to pay the cost? Sabi nga ni David, di ba? I'm going, I will not serve God without paying the cost of it. There is always a cost in serving God. And people come because ang nagmamotivate sa kanila, kala nila may makukuha sila sa Diyos. Eh doon pa lang, hindi mo kilala ang Diyos. Today is not the day to get anything. Today, God is calling you to come to Him, to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Period. Diba? This is not the day that God wants you to be happy. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. Why? Because He promises a special presence with us. That He did not promise when we are merely alone. And what is that special presence of the Lord? Yun yung joy ng heart mo. Diba? There in that place. We bring our friends, we encourage them to come because kung gusto mo silang maligtas, to me, it's the most blessed day because of this special presence of God. So, pero ito, ano? Wala. Lahat ng privilege, lumaki nga sila nandun. Baka kabisadong kabisado na. Hey, ako nga, di ba? Sinasabi ko sa inyo, I grew up na Roman Catholic. Masipag yung parents ko talaga. Practicing Roman Catholic. Eh, hanggang ngayon, yung ibang bahagi ng mas, yung sinasabi ng pare, yung sagot namin, nasa isip ko pa rin. Kaya ko pa rin. Kasi nga, to, kagraduate na ako sa halis na nakilala ko Panginoon. Hindi ba na ako bata? Eh, practicing Catholic ang family namin. Hindi sila nominal Catholic. So, imagine mo to. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, try to imagine yourself living in that temple. Diba, anong unang tatanong ng bata? Pag nakina niya, Toy, ba't may mga dalang ahayop yung mga yan? Ba't tinatala nila dito sa, sa temple? Di ba masama yan? Dapat nandun lang sa bukid. Ito, isang bahan to eh. Ba't merong ano? Anong papaliwanag mo? Di ba? Because of sin. Ba't yung malinang sa kanila yun? Yung sin? Kasi yun lang talaga isasagot dun eh. But the problem is that they don't care at all what God had said in His Word concerning what should be His and what the priest can only have. Kaya nga ako, di ba, sinasabi ko sa inyo, hindi ako pala sagot na tatanungin niyo ako kung magtatay kayo o hindi. Malibang ko talaga seryoso kayo. Pero kung natatangay lang kayo ng mga issue-issue dyan, 
Ayaw ang makipag-usap sa ganyan. Nagdi-debate sa bagay na yan. Why? Because it is a serious matter what belongs to God. Kung sabihin ng Diyos 50, aangal ka. Kung tapat, ang dami nga naglilingkod sa Panginoon kahit walang sweldo eh. Pakainin lang. Di ba? Ano yun ko kayo? Napagsasamantalaan nga yung iba eh. Na mga pastor eh. Kasi ayaw i-share ng pastor yung para din sa kanya mga anak. Sana. Kasi gahaman. They are shameless. So shameless that they would even, sabi no, nung serba, use sport to make sure that what they want would be theirs. Nakikita nyo how God describe it? Sar- ano ba ang Panginoon? Sarcastic ba? Or overstated ba? Alam natin, pwede mangyari yan. At nangyayari yan. You see, they may actually be there in the temple. They may be wearing their uniform as priests. They may be performing their rituals. But do you see any reverence? And real reverence for God? Do you see any real reverence for the Word of God? Do you see any reverence in serving God and His people? Do you see any reverence for the things that are holy to God? Anong sabi sa Hebrew? God has not changed. We are to remain in awe of Him because He is a fiery God. At dahil dito, ano po yung verdict ng Diyos? Verse 17. Therefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Diba? Therefore, may sinasama rin. Nagtatalo po sa verse na yan. Sa Hebrew. Some Hebrew scholars render the verse to indicate that as a result of the corruption of the priest ministry, the people likewise begin to follow their leaders in disdaining the sacrifices. So pag in mo yun, ang magiging translation. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Ganun po yung King James. Pero sa ibang translation po na hindi King James, others translate it to indicate that the priest's sin was very great. And because they abhorred the offering of the Lord, great yung sins ng priest because they were the ones abhorring. Kaya nga sa translation ng iba, thus, the sin of the young men was very great in the sight of the Lord, for they treated the offerings of the Lord with contempt. That's how the Revised Standard Version translated the Hebrew. Eh, tanungin nyo ko. Siyempre, I suspect both are true. Diba? Kung ano yung ginawa ng leader, siya rin ginagawa ng iba. Kung inabhor ng leader yun, kaya nga nagkaroon ng mga offering, tinatanggap ng mga priest na defected. Kasi ang interest lang ng priest yung nasa loob. Nakukuha nyo? The priests do not esteem the sacrifices and offerings which they offer on men's behalf at Shiloh. And so, yung mga tao, ganun na din. And that is why this is a very grave sin. 
the priests will lead others into sin and those who follow them as well. That's why it is a very sad history in the church. Alam ng mga tao, yung priest, yung high priest nila nagluloko. But okay lang sa kanila. Wala nila yung pagbabago. You do not abhor what they do. Kung nakita niyo ako one day, kung ano-ano pinaggagawa ko. And you will tolerate me to be your pastor. Ano pagkakaiba niyo sa akin? Kasabihin lang ba natin, eh, mahala si pastor dyan, mananagot siya sa Diyos. Mananagot ka rin. Because you know your duty. May qualifications na binigay ang Panginoon. At kaya nandun yung pastor, dahil nga, nag-decide tayo, qualified siya. Therefore, kung hindi na siya qualified, anong responsibility mo? The same, to make sure that that qualification, which is the Word of God, be implemented in the Church of God. Nakukuha niyo? You are to be loyal to God and to the revealed will of God. If you allow the will of God to be trampled upon, you have become part of those who trample it. For the sake of peace, there will never be peace in the church. Because God is angry. See? Ano nga napin ang peace? Tayo tayo. Kasi may gagawin ka rin kalokohan para hindi ka rin masita. Is there peace? If we tolerate each other, there is no peace. The only peace is the peace that comes from God because the church, the head is Christ. Not anyone. I'm not your head. I'm part of the body. And the body, iba-iba yung parts. I'm just doing my part. But I have never become the head of the church. I'm still part of that body whose head is Christ. You see, this problem is not only existing among the religious leaders. But God also saw the same problem among the people of God in many, many instances. Diba, nabasa niyo yung sa Isaiah, Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of sacrifices to me, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings, of rams, and the fat of fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my court? Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbath, and the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure iniquity and the sacred meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourself. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Nakikita lahat. People are coming. Some are oppressing. Widow. May iba pumupunta doon sasama sa, sa pagsamba. Their hands are full of blood. Naglagay sila ng mga appointed feast that God hates. Diba? Who told you to sacrifice? So, yung regulative principle natin, is it simply dahil maingat o magsobra lang tayo higpit? If you know God. That's why I cannot accept the ethic. Kung hindi ipinagbabawal, pwedeng gawin. 
Basta sincere ka lang. Sa akin, kung hindi pinag-uutos, tumahimi ka lang. Hindi naman inuutos ng Lord na dalhin mo yan. Ba't mo dadali? I will not take the ethics da. Hindi naman bawal eh. In fact, may example na sa ano. So, magsayawan tayo dito. Magpalakpakan tayo. I did not ask you, let's give, let's offer a clap to the Lord. Saan ko pupulutin yun? The people of God are not commanded to do that. I have no command for you. Hindi naman daw pinagbabawal dahil sa ote merong nagpalakpak. Pero hindi rin sila inutusan. Walang tumayo kahit isang priest doon. Let us offer a clap to the Lord. Or let us jump for the Lord. Kung ano man yan, for the Lord. That's so much abuse for the Lord. There are many things. You have only to read Isaiah 1.10. Kung ako may mga kausap mag I just show them and lead them to Isaiah 1.10. And then read. They are good things that were done by the people of God. Look at the way, God. What are you talking about sincerity? I believe they were sincere in doing that. It's for the Lord. But what did God say? To what purpose is this? Ano purpose nun? See, yun ang unang statement ng Panginoon. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me? Anong purpose nun? You see, God is a purposeful God. When God asks people to do something, di ba? Kikita nyo naman yung animal. Yung mga parts mismo binabanggit ng Panginoon. Kung anong gagawin. Eh, yung pa kaya? Malakay, yung paborito ng marami. Chapter 1, verse 6, A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of all. To you priests who despise my name, yet you say, In what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food on my altar, but say, In what way have we defiled you? By saying, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the layman sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably? Sige nga. Sa kasal nyo, pa, maganda kayo ng panis. Nagutuwa ba kami sa inyo? Kami na inimbita nyo? Sa verde nyo? O, oh, double dead yung, yung bakang ano. Alam mo yan, mura akong nabili. Double dead na kasi. No? Kakain kayo? Malutuwa kayo? You see how God speaks? Do you know who the Lord is? Eh, hindi iba na sa New Testament. Ha? Huh? You just go to Revelation and how Christ spoke to the churches. Maybe your mouth will be shut. Na parang, eh, New Testament na ngayon, Old Testament yan, Pastor Joey. All you have to read is read the way Jesus Christ as the risen Lord addressed His churches. And what are you going to hear from the words of Christ? I will spit you out of my mouth if you repent not. Is it different language? You do not know the anger of the Lord. You do not know the wrath of God. In the end, you do not know the Lord. That's the problem. Malachi 3 Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offering. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Diba? 
Sasabihin ba natin, maunawaan naman ng Lord eh, bakit ko siya, di ba, para tayo bata, kinukupitan natin yung tatay-nanay natin. Pag tulog na sila, ginagapag natin yung bulsa. Pag nauli, maintindihan. Ay, hindi mo naman eh. Nahingit kasi ako sa mga bata eh. Doon makabiling candy. Para piso lang naman kinupit ko eh. Tsaka ngayon lang. Ngayon lang naman. Hindi naman parate. See? The kind of prison eh. You can do that too in the face of God. God would say to you, you do not know me. Because if you know me, that would not be your excuse. That would not be your reason. That's why we have a very sick evangelical lesson. Even among us who are reformed, the moment we lower our view of who God is, everything will change. Just like that, even your behavior. In worship, kahit sandalin, Because yung mind mo hindi na klaro kung sino yung nais nice mong paglingkuran. So you may say, how about us today? In our time, Pastor, time ni nila Samuel yan, time nila Eli yan. Is there a version of such sins in our lives today? Ano ba sabi ni Pedro? Sino ba tayo ngayon? 1 Peter 2 Verse 5, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house. Alam niyo ginagawa ng Diyos sa atin? Ano ang ginagawa ng Diyos sa Trinity Reform Baptist Church? We are living stones. You are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. For what purpose? To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. In verse 9, inuli, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light who once were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Kino priesthood ngayon? Alam mo kung anong parusa ng Panginoon kay Eli at sa kanyang mga anak? Eli could have removed his sons long ago. Kaya lang, hindi ko malaman. I'm not dogmatic. Hindi ko, iniisip niya. Yung, la, yung kasunod niya eh. Yung pangalan niya eh. Ang susunod, yung anak niya. Maging high priest. Do you know the story of their line? God destroyed it. May nakatakas na isa, si Abiatar. Naalala niyo? The priest Abiatar. In the end, the Lord catch him. And from that time on, that line is gone. Do you know who the Lord is? You do not know me. They do not know the Lord. They died on the same day. You remember that? Eli, who re- their father who received the news, died also. Fell from his chair. Beyond. Dead. And mind you, they are priests. What clear instructions do we find in Scripture? We, Hebrews 11:6. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Do you believe that verse? Hindi, hindi naman ganyan ang Diyos, sabi ng iba. Maunawaan niya naman. Basta sincere ka lang. Hebrews 12.28 Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. A fiery God. 
Hebrews 13.15 Therefore, by Him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. We have so many specific verses. In 1 Corinthians 11.27 On the first day of the month, we decided to have a Lord's Supper. Ano sinasabi niya? Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So ano ba baliwalain natin tong verse na ito? Pag may Lord's Supper time, just to please the people who have come, we'll just serve it to them. We're killing people! I want people who come here to come to know the Lord and be saved and not be condemned. Why would I allow just them freely to take the Lord's Supper? When you have this clear verse, a direct discipline coming from the Lord. Let a man examine himself. And so, after that examination, let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks what? Not salvation, not redemption, judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Don't we also have clear teachings in Scripture? Di mo kailangan maging theologian. In 2 Corinthians 9, 7, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So think about that. God loves a cheerful giver. Why would you discuss with your pastor about tithing, whether it is going to be from the gross income or from the net income? I'm not going to talk to you about that. I'm just going to give to you this verse. Let each man give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. God loves. I like that. God loves you. And has a wonderful plan for your life. Be a cheerful giver. That's the wonderful plan. You think about the Lord's Supper. You think about when we sing Him. What was the instruction? Make melody in your heart. Okay, you want to use the drums. You want to use the piano. So good. You want to use music. If the members have knowledge of this. But remember, what pleases God is that when we come before Him, praising Him with songs, spiritual songs and hymns, the melody that God hears comes not from those instruments, not merely from these lips or voices or the vocal cords that sing so well. It pleases us. Diba ang sarap katabi na ganda-ganda ng boses? Esa Diyos. Eh, kung yun ang basiyan, eh, papano ako? Kulang ako ng isang nota. Kahit anong kanta ko, yung nota na yun, hindi matamaan. Hindi na ba ako pwede kumanta? Pwede. Because the melody that should come out from you is from your heart. Philippians 4.18 Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full having received from Epaphroditus the thing sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Are these New Testament teachings on being God's royal and holy priesthood important to you? Do you see it that it is diligently and faithfully observed as you draw near to God? If you and I will ask the same question that the Jew asked, in what way have we despised your name? Will God be able to pinpoint something in your life, in my life, that we have been practicing for 30 years now, and yet, God says, I was so displeased. I'm tired of it. I'm weary of your sacrifice. I'm weary of your singing. I'm weary 
of your offering. I'm weary of your praising. Why have you? Why are you weary? Why yung sabi sa Isaiah? God is weird. I don't have anything about it. It's not too late for me. Not too late for you, brother. Before you leave your house, remember. Why am I going to Baluba? So far from my house. In the heat of the day. If you have a right focus, it will never matter. I want to be where Christ is being worshipped. And I want to be part of it. That I may express not only my gratitude, my praises, but most of all my love for Him. For though I am this, He loved me. In what area are we dishonoring the Lord? If you know something, it is your duty to tell me if I have been failing in noticing it. But brethren, yes, the Lord is asking us to come, to be blessed, to enjoy His presence. But remember, you must come knowing who the Lord is. If you forget that, because we are not perfect, we can easily do things that the Lord hates. We can easily bring before God Sunday after Sunday something that He is weary of receiving from us and that is why I have to remind you as your pastor because we are like this we could easily fail we could easily forget we miss each other so much that we forget that the real reason we come here is because of God you, you, you miss so much each other it's almost time to worship and you still want to talk to each other. Be aware, brethren, the priority of this day is not our fellowship with each other. This is the Lord's day. And our priority is to make sure we'll have a very pleasing encounter with God, even though we have so many weaknesses. Let's thank God that He invites us to come. Let us not fear. God's grace is available. He will supply what we need. All you have to do is to ask Him. And always to remember who God is. Stick that in your head. The reason why all this has been done by these very children of the high priest is because they do not know the Lord. So don't forget who God is when we come together. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the reminders that you have given to us as a church. And we confess, Father, that we always fall short of your glory. We ask, Father, for your forgiveness, for your cleansing us. And we praise you because of who Jesus is. We thank you, Lord, that there is no longer any condemnation to us who are in Christ. And yet, we acknowledge, Father, that there are 
many, many things that you have clearly mentioned in Scripture that you do not want to see that your people are doing, especially when they come before your holy presence. Help us, Lord, to develop that consciousness, especially because there are special moments that we gather for this very purpose and yet may carry with us the things that you abhor, the things that weary you, the things that you hate most. Oh, Heavenly Father, we do not presume that we will not fall into such. That is why we call upon you. Write these truths upon our hearts and make us always conscious who is the God that we are serving. Hear us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.